After finding a dark suit, Peter Parker is corrupted by evil and makes several enemies, needing the help of old rivals to fix his universe. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Spider-Man 3, from 2007. In New York, Mary Jane finally began her dream career as an actress. On the day of her premiere, Peter goes to the theater and watches the musical from the front row, not realizing that Harry is right above him. After the performance, the hero is leaving the theater when he runs into his former best friend, trying to talk to him about what happened to Norman. Despite his insistence, Harry refuses to talk and leaves without listening to what he has to say. After the performance, Peter takes Mary Jane on a date outdoors, where they spend the night on the webs. While the couple are kissing, a small meteor falls from the sky unseen, bringing a parasite from outer space. Unaware of the symbiote's presence, the two get on their bikes and drive off, carrying the alien goo that is attached to the license plate. Far away, a man called Flint manages to escape from the prison and returns home, climbing in through the bedroom window of his daughter, who is very ill. There, Flint is caught by his wife, who begins to offend him, only stopping when she realizes that their daughter is listening in. When he sees the girl, Flint promises that he will get the money for the treatment, but he doesn't have a chance to say any more because the police arrive and he has to escape through the window. On the other side of town, Peter is driving when he is surprised by Harry, who starts attacking him with his glider. With some blades in his arm, Osborne cuts Peter's stomach and throws him away, but Spider-Man manages to hold on and throws small balls of webbing in his direction. Harry cuts the web and kicks Peter so hard that he leaves a hole in the wall with the impact. As Harry attacks, Peter tries to tell him that he didn't eliminate Norman and that he took his own life by accident, but the man doesn't believe him and grabs the spider by the leg, causing him to crash into the walls of the buildings. Harry also throws his former best friend through the window of a building. Peter tries to escape down a narrow alley while Harry keeps trying to hit him with his sword. When that doesn't work, the Green Goblin's son uses the electronic boomerangs his father developed, making the little drones cut Peter. Even so, the spider manages to neutralize most of them and throws the last one at Harry, causing an explosion. Taking advantage of the distraction, Peter leaves a piece of web in the middle of the path, causing Harry to flip over in the air and fall to the ground completely obliterated. Concerned, Parker goes to his friend and tries to give him a heart massage, but this doesn't work and he has to take him to hospital, where the doctors try hard to revive him. On the way out of town, Flint is trying to get away from the police who are still after him. To lose them, the man jumps the fence and enters a particle testing area, where he accidentally falls into a sand pit. In the office, the team is about to turn on the machine when they notice a change in the mass, but they believe it's just a bird and turn on the equipment. Suddenly, the machine starts spinning wildly and the tiny crystals enter Flint's bloodstream, causing his body to fall apart in the sand. At the hospital, a doctor comes to talk to Peter and tells him that Harry has lost his memory. After hearing the news, Spidey goes to check on his friend and discovers that he has forgotten practically everything, including the fact that he is Spider-Man and his resentment at Norman's perishment. In the test area, the grains of sand begin to move and Flint slowly begins to rebuild his body, which is now entirely made of sand. Still unable to control his movements properly, the man gets up and starts walking out of the plant. In his apartment, Peter is planning a wedding proposal when Mary Jane arrives saying that the newspaper has published a review of her performance. Although the girl is in need of emotional support, the policemen radio for help and Peter goes to answer the call, leaving Mary Jane helpless. At the scene, the control of a crane fails and a gigantic steel beam hits a building, almost hitting Gwen. Although she manages to escape the first impact, a second one damages the structure of the building, causing a piece of concrete to come loose and almost knock the girl over. While Gwen tries to hold on, a photographer called Eddie starts taking pictures when he recognizes the girl, who coincidentally happens to be his girlfriend. As if the situation wasn't bad enough, the crane comes tearing through the building from the bottom up, knocking Gwen down and she has to be rescued by Spider-Man. At the Daily Bugle, Eddie arrives with the photos he took during the crane accident and tries to sell them to J.J. Jameson, but Parker arrives in time to show him that he also took some pictures. Despite this, the newspaper owner prefers to keep Eddie's photos, as he is a newcomer and charges less. Seizing the opportunity, the budding photographer says he'd like a steady job and JJJ says he has an opening, which makes Peter indignant. Since they both want the same job, the editor of the Daily Bugle says he wants a compromising photo of Spider-Man, and whoever gets it gets the job. While Peter takes Harry home, Mary Jane goes to rehearsal and finds another actress in her place. Extremely shaken, the girl leaves the theater and finds a large crowd applauding Spider-Man. Downtown, the city council is organizing an event to hand over the key to the city to Webhead for saving the captain's daughter. Then, Mary Jane meets Peter and thinks it's best not to say anything about what happened, 
trying to support her boyfriend at his award ceremony. Walking through the streets of the city, Flint passes two policemen who recognize him, forcing him to hide in a sand truck. Thinking he had buried himself, one of the agents picks up a shovel to dig, but is knocked down by Flint, who takes advantage of the sand to form a gigantic body. On seeing the creature, the police start shooting at it, forcing the fugitive to escape in a sandstorm. At the ceremony, Mary Jane is watching Gwen's speech when Harry arrives to say he's going to watch her again at the theater, forcing the girl to say she's been dismissed. While Harry tries to console her, Gwen calls Spider-Man and Peter jumps into the crowd, greeting people and descending upside down to the stage. When he arrives in front of Gwen, people ask Spider-Man to kiss her and Peter says she can do it, the girl then removes part of his mask and kisses him upside down, just as he did with Mary Jane. Watching everything from the audience, the girl is extremely hurt and tries to leave, but is interrupted by the Sandman, who is passing by. As he turns the corner, Flint comes across an armored car and decides to break into the vehicle, using his sand to bury the guards and step on the accelerator. While he's picking up the bags of money, Spider-Man arrives and starts to fight the villain, but he can't hurt the sand and is thrown out of the armored car. Surfing over the door of the vehicle, Peter hits several webs on Flint and throws the bag of money back into the vehicle. Turning his hand into a sledgehammer, the villain manages to knock Spider-Man down and push him into the armored car. There, Peter sees that the vehicle is about to crash and throws the two guards out, trapping them in his web. However, he can't get out in time and ends up crashing, allowing Flint to escape. After the fight, Peter goes to a French restaurant and gives the ring to the receptionist, asking him to help with the surprise for Mary Jane. After a few minutes, the girl arrives for dinner and tries to vent about what she's feeling, but Peter doesn't even let her finish and starts talking about the weight of being Spider-Man. Suddenly, Gwen shows up at the restaurant and greets Peter, revealing that she is his lab partner from college, which makes the kissing situation even more serious. While the waiters bring the ring, Mary Jane says she's not feeling well and leaves, thwarting Peter's plans to propose. Still unable to understand why she's so upset, he calls his girlfriend and asks to talk, but Mary Jane just ignores his messages. As soon as he hangs up, he gets a call from Captain Stacy, who asks him to come to the police station. There, Gwen's father tells her that they have discovered that the culprit behind Uncle Ben's perishment is a man called Flint, who was responsible for pulling the trigger. When he sees Flint's photo, Peter recognizes him and goes into a state of denial, shouting at the captain and calling him incompetent. Wanting revenge, Peter synchronizes the police radio and waits for a call involving the Sandman. While he's listening to the transmissions, Mary Jane arrives at the apartment and offers to talk to him about the discovery, but the man refuses, saying he doesn't want her help. As soon as she leaves, Peter puts on his costume and ends up falling asleep, being infected by the symbiote without even realizing it. Some time later, Peter wakes up and realizes that his costume is completely dark and that he feels a different energy. Excited by the upgrade, Parker takes a sample of the symbiote to his professor, who, despite being a physicist, agrees to study the parasite. On his way home, Peter hears a police call about a sandstorm and puts on his black costume to fight Flint. With the help of the symbiote, Spider-Man goes to the scene and catches the last particles of sand escaping into the sewer. Peter then rips off the manhole cover when Eddie shows up to take some pictures. Noticing his rival, Parker grabs his camera and throws it against the wall, destroying the device. In the sewer, Peter confronts Flint and asks him if he remembers Ben Parker, starting a session of attacks immediately afterwards. On the subway tracks, the two start fighting and Peter rubs the villain's face in one of the trains. After rebuilding his head with sand, Flint hits Parker who returns with another punch, sending them both tumbling down the tracks. While Peter is holding on to the web, Flint falls into a puddle of water, which causes his body to crumble like mud. As soon as he realizes this, Peter doesn't think twice before breaking the pipe, causing an absurd amount of water to gush over the villain, causing his body to completely fall apart. Thinking he's managed to eliminate him, Peter goes to Aunt May and tells her that Spider-Man has eliminated the criminal, but the woman doesn't believe him, saying that a hero doesn't take people's lives. Not knowing what to say, Peter says that he deserved it and May replies that not even Spider-Man has the power to decide that, which leaves the man confused. While he thinks about what his aunt said, Mary Jane goes for an interview and gets a job as a waitress and singer. After the interview, the girl thinks about calling someone and skips Peter's contact, asking to speak to Harry. At his house, the two of them start cooking and dancing, having a lot of fun together. During dinner, the two start talking and end up kissing. Repentant, Mary Jane apologizes and leaves rather embarrassed. After she leaves, Harry starts drinking and hallucinating his father, which for some reason makes him recover his memories and come back with the aim of destroying Peter's life. To do so, he breaks into Mary Jane's apartment and threatens her, 
telling her that she must do one thing if she wants to survive. At home, Peter receives a call from his girlfriend, who asks to meet on a bridge. There, the webhead arrives with a bouquet of flowers and asks if everything is all right, but Mary Jane barely looks at the flower and says she wants to break up, claiming that he doesn't pay any attention to her. Without understanding, Peter says that they can sort it out and shows her the ring, saying that he would propose to her in the restaurant. To make him give up, Mary Jane replies that she's already in love with someone else and leaves in tears, leaving Peter devastated. Needing to talk, he calls Harry for lunch and gets his best friend off his chest. To make him realize how selfish he's been, Harry tells him that Mary Jane was dismissed from the play and didn't tell him. While Peter wonders why she talked about it with someone else, Harry tells him that Mary Jane is in love with him and that they're together now, which leaves Parker in a state of denial. Disgruntled, Spider-Man leaves while Harry laughs in the restaurant. At home, Peter digests the information and goes to Norman's son's house to ask questions, but Harry continues to make fun of the situation. Furious, Peter starts attacking his former best friend, who sticks a dagger in his stomach. After removing the blade, Spider-Man lands a kick that knocks Harry into the wall, but he hits back with another that knocks Peter into the table. Totally out of control, the two begin to exchange blows and the spider pushes Harry through a glass window, ending up in the Green Goblin's laboratory. With a saber, Norman's son tries to hit Peter and ends up hitting the controls of his glider, causing the object to fly wildly. Taking advantage of this, the webhead throws Harry upwards, causing him to be hit and crash into a shelf of explosives. Fallen, Harry once again blames Peter for Norman's perishment and Parker says he was an embarrassment to his father, laughing in his face. Furious, Harry throws a grenade at Spider-Man, who doesn't think twice before dodging and throwing the bomb back, which explodes in his rival's face. On the streets, Peter walks as if nothing had happened until he passes a newsstand, where he sees a headline accusing Spider-Man of being a thief. Looking at the headline, Parker sees that the photo is of Eddie and decides to take revenge. At the Daily Bugle, people are celebrating the promotion of the new photographer. After everyone has left, Peter appears and shows that he has discovered the editing in the photo. Desperate, the new photographer begs Peter not to tell anyone, saying he'll never get a job again. Peter replies that he should have thought of this before and hands the evidence over to the editor-in-chief. When he discovers the hoax, JJJ fires Eddie and is forced to post a retraction, which makes Peter very happy. While celebrating, Parker receives a call from the professor who talks about the symbiote, stating that it enhances the host's characteristics, especially its aggressiveness. With his personality now completely changed, Peter just hangs up on the professor and takes several photos of himself in black clothes, using this to get his job at the Daily Bugle, now with double the salary. Then, Peter arranges to meet Gwen at the restaurant where Mary Jane is working. As soon as she sees his ex, Gwen asks if they shouldn't go somewhere else and Peter disagrees, saying that it's fine there. At this point, the presenter calls Mary Jane up on stage to perform, but Peter then goes to the piano, stealing the show from her. While dancing in the crowd, Parker goes up to Gwen and asks her to join in, dancing with her in front of Mary Jane. At the end of the show, Peter stares at his ex and Gwen finally understands that she was being used and goes to Mary Jane to apologize. Quite upset, the girl goes off to the corner to be alone, but Peter doesn't respect this and goes over to talk to her. Seeing Peter trying to bother her, two security guards arrive to intervene and Spider-Man attacks them both, punching Mary Jane when she tries to separate them. After that, the arrogant version of Peter finally realizes that it has crossed the line and leaves. While he ponders on top of a cathedral, Flint climbs out of the sewer and becomes determined to take revenge on Spider-Man. Thinking about what the professor said, Peter decides to remove the symbiote and goes to the church bell to do so. Downstairs, Eddie is praying and asks God for an opportunity to finish Parker off. At the top, Peter tries to remove his black clothes and ends up hitting the bell, causing waves that disturb the symbiote. As soon as he realizes this, Spider-Man decides to use the waves to his advantage and starts hitting the bell, causing the parasite to leave his body. Downstairs, Eddie hears the noise and approaches to investigate, only to be hit by the symbiote that falls on top of him. While Peter is getting rid of the parasite, Eddie is infected and ends up becoming Venom. Without realizing what has just happened, the webhead goes home and takes a shower while he thinks about the latest events. Hunting Spider-Man, Flint ends up meeting Eddie, who suggests an alliance, saying that they both want to take Peter's life and that he won't stand a chance against them. To make the spider appear, Eddie pretends to be a taxi driver and picks up Mary Jane, hanging her from the top of an 80-story building. Watching everything on the news, Peter realizes that he is to blame for everything and puts on his old red and blue costume. At home, Harry is also watching the news when Peter turns up to ask for help. With half his face destroyed by the explosion, 
Osborne replies that he doesn't deserve help and kicks his former best friend out, leaving him to fight alone. As soon as he leaves, the butler appears and tells Harry that he's seen things he's never told anyone, saying that he cleaned Norman's wounds and that they were all made by the glider itself, confirming that the Green Goblin really did take his own life. Still inside the cab, Mary Jane hears Venom's webs give way and can do nothing as the vehicle falls. A few meters below, a web net manages to hold the car, but the girl is still in danger. Just then, Spider-Man arrives and lands on the hood of the cab, but is soon attacked by Eddie. After knocking him into his web, the villain grabs Peter's arms and jumps on him, removing his mask. Just then, Venom's webs begin to crack and a concrete brick almost hits Mary Jane. While Eddie humiliates Peter, the girl takes the opportunity to pick up the block and drop it on Venom, hitting him on the head. As soon as the villain turns around, Spider-Man takes the opportunity to attack Eddie, fighting him as they fall. Trapped by Venom's web, Peter ends up plummeting to the sand while a construction truck crashes into Mary Jane, forcing her to jump out of the cab and onto another strand of web. At this point, the Sandman finally reveals himself and builds a giant body to attack Parker, who ignores his presence and tries to climb up to Mary Jane. Obviously Eddie won't allow it and manages to grab Peter's neck, pinning him against a beam while Flint lands several punches. When the webhead is almost defeated, Harry appears and throws a bomb at the Sandman, blowing off part of his skull. With his gliding skateboard, Osborne manages to knock Venom down and helps Peter up, but the fight isn't over yet and the two need to join forces to defeat the villains. With the thruster, Harry manages to set the Sandman's arm on fire, turning the limb into glass and breaking it. However, the movement causes the web to give way and the cab ends up falling on Mary Jane, knocking her out. To save her, the two heroes fly after her with the glider and manage to rescue her at the last second. Even so, the villains are still standing and Flint almost manages to take down Harry, who has to resort to guided missiles. In this way, he manages to destroy the Sandman's giant body, but Venom is still standing and manages to knock Peter down, trapping his arms and using a steel stake to hit him. Just as Spider-Man is about to be eliminated, Harry appears trying to hit Eddie, but the villain manages to pull the glider, knocking the Green Goblin down and onto some steel bars. Because of the vibration of the tubes, the parasite begins to detach itself from Eddie's body, which reminds Peter of the bell in the church. To finish off Spider-Man, Venom takes the glider and tries to drive the blade into the spider, but Harry gets in the way, having his chest pierced and falling several floors. Filled with rage, Peter manages to break free and uses the steel tubes to hit the symbiote. After surrounding Venom with the bars, Spider-Man starts hitting metal against metal until the parasite collapses. When this happens, Peter pulls Eddie out and uses the bars to keep the parasite under control. To end the fight, Peter grabs one of Harry's bombs and throws it at the symbiote, but Eddie tries to jump back at the parasite and is also hit by the explosion, turning into smoke. As soon as this happens, Flint appears and says that he didn't want any of this to happen, telling him about his daughter's health and that he only wanted money for the treatment. The Sandman then explains that he tried to tell Ben that he only wanted the car, but the old man tried to convince him to give it all up and go home. When his partner came running with the money, Flint was startled and the gun accidentally went off, hitting Ben at point-blank range. After hearing his side of the story, Peter says that he too has done terrible things and that he forgives Flint for what happened, letting him go in a cloud of dust. When the fight is over, Peter goes to Harry and apologizes for everything he's done. With the last of his strength, Harry says that none of this matters and that he's happy to have had Peter as a friend. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.